Ranking Member Capito and I thank our, all of our witnesses for joining us today as well. This tragic incident is a reminder of the importance of following the golden rule and treating other people the way we would like to be treated if we were in their shoes. Today's hearing is an opportunity to put ourselves in the shoes of those impacted by this disaster, examine the immediate response, and ensure long-term accountability for the cleanup efforts. It's our responsibility in Congress to answer, one, what went wrong, two, what do we need to do to fix it, what do we need to do to make sure it never happens again. Our existing laws have allowed EPA to identify Norfolk Southern as a responsible party and began to hold the corporation responsible for the costs of the emergency response, as well as for the long-term remediation of this area. We want to hear from our witnesses today whether Norfolk Southern is meeting its obligations, including its moral obligations. In addition, we should note that uh, responding to this disaster is a shared responsibility between de different levels of government and Norfolk Southern. And it is imperative for us to ensure that the agencies tasked with responding to disasters like this have the necessary resources that they need to ensure the safety of the air that people breathe, the water they drink, and the soil they use on which to grow crops. Norfolk Southern appears to have cooperated with these orders and has agreed to pay for the environmental cleanup resulting from the derailment. However, the ultimate cost, costs may exceed the immediate cleanup needs. And moreover, an, an apparent uh, lack of transparency on the part of Norfolk Southern, at least in the early days of the response, has left some members of the community battling with mistrust and looking for answers. A new generation of Americans is now waiting to see how their government responds today and in the days to come. This incident may well prove to be a defining moment in their lives as it was in my own. Let's do what's right, not only for the people of East Palestine, but for everyone who believes that those who transport potentially dangerous chemicals must take the necessary steps to protect our people and our one and only planet. I want to convey to all of you that the public deserved a better level of transparency and much, much sooner. A month after the accident, it's clear to me that EPA's risk communication strategy fell short. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, impacting, co impacted communities were clamoring for answers. In the absence of adequate transparency to the public, social media, that just opens up a gap for social media, armchair citizen scientists, and political pundits on both sides to fuel false narratives that have further undermined that public confidence in the response to the derailment. With each week passing, the, the confusion seemed to grow. Even after weeks of repeated air, soil, and water monitoring have shown levels of the implicated contaminants of magnitude well below the a ATSDR and EPA levels of concern in the air and water, the initial delays in messaging and response has meant that the residents still do not trust these results enough to feel safe. And trust is essential in these situations. That has been made worse, I think, by a lot of the misinformation that we've seen. You can't address fear and mistrust by, print by pointing residents to an EPA website filled with fact sheets and press releases. Risk communications needs to be done in a clear but compassionate, relatable manner right down there where it's happening. So why did it take weeks for the EPA administrator to drink the water he repeatedly told residents was safe? Why did it take almost a month to establish a response center and go door to door to East Palestine families' concerns? As a result of early missteps, I believe um, that we need to keep moving forward here. This committee must get to the bottom of whether EPA has some of the authorities for some of the actions that it's taken on the removal and whether they are serving the best interests of our constituents. Before Congress considers any changes to existing laws, we must better understand what has gone wrong with this response so far and what can be done better in the future, but also what went right. So to the residents of East Palestine and surrounding communities, your Congress hears you. Every American deserves to feel safe in their home and confident that the water that they drink and that the air that they breathe is safe. When something like this happens, God forbid, they should also be able to trust the federal government will be quick, deliberate, transparent, and clear in their response, and that guilty parties will be held responsible. 
I believe the environmental laws on the book are up to the task. So what has gone wrong? What has gone right? That's what we're here to talk about today. Thank you. Today for this important hearing, Ranking Member Capito and I thank all of our witnesses for joining us.